below all critical daily moving averages after its most recent rejection hours ago, above 27,000 US dollars. Moon boys worldwide cower in fear of a dumpulation all the way down here to the depths of Dumpy Town. But is this actually really scary? Or is it actually not even that scary at all? Right now, the price of Bitcoin is below very much so 30,000 US dollars and actually right in between 30 and 20 at 25,000 US dollars. Now, are we heading down to the target that I've been looking for for the past few weeks around 23,000 US dollars? Or in fact, will this dump end here? Uh, huge question here. So there's a few things that have developed over the past couple of days specifically. I want to talk about this. So we did get the delay of a lot of the ETFs, but an approval of a spot Bitcoin ETF is inevitable according to the former SEC chair replaced by Gary G himself. He now has the job that J uh, Jay Clayton had. Uh, just saying an ETF is inevitable. Grayscale CEO Michael Sonnenschein as well talking about the ETF after their most recent, recent win against the SEC uh from uh, about converting grayscale's gbct gbtc trust into a bitcoin spot etf um but with this being said we have bloomberg etf analysts uh, this is this is kind of funny i think uh, eric bakunas and james safart saying that the likelihood of a bitcoin spot etf is about 75 percent for this year and nearly 100 percent for next year so first of all i don't know where they're getting those numbers um, you know, I, I, I educate myself with the, on this space every day and I try to like get information, and everything, where are these numbers coming from? I'm just kind of curious. Is it kind of just every time the SEC loses a lawsuit, do they increase the chance by 25%? It's kind of what it seems like. I'm not sure where they're getting the numbers there. I mean, I'm not complaining. I think that would be amazing if that did happen. I'm just curious. Maybe if, if anyone knows, could you leave a comment below if they're just pulling these numbers out of their their tushies, right? I don't fully understand. I think it's kind of pointless. I personally think there will be an ETF approval. I just think these uh, these uh, these percentage things they're throwing out, it seems like they're just putting out random numbers for clicks, I guess. I don't really know. I don't, is there actually anything concretely that'll tell us, yes, there's about a three and four chance, uh, three and four chance that there will be a Bitcoin spot ETF approval this year. Where's that coming from? So I'm just a little confused about that. Uh, but remarkably, this article also says with their grayscale ruling that they won against the SEC here, it'll be fascinating to see how the SEC handles the batch of six Bitcoin spot ETFs with this decision due tomorrow, which they did delay them. Okay, so this article was from a day before that. And what will be the reasoning by the SEC now? Or will there be another surprise ruling? So basically, I just think they're delaying, the SEC is delaying these approvals. They don't really have reasons and they're trying to make them up in the meantime. Uh, and I want to look at Bitcoin's charts, but also let's start off with Crypto Noob on Twitter talking about this. And this is just a very clear, simple explanation of where most people believe we are in this cycle based on basically the hardest evidence we have of these cycles, the Bitcoin halvings, and just literally uh, the time in between those halvings. If we look back uh, roughly the same amount of time before each having, Bitcoin has done something similar, which is why I am not very, one, concerned, two, excited. I'm neither. I'm not really concerned or excited for the next month uh, because overall, I think the next month is going to be pretty boring. And the next couple of months, very likely, again, I continue to reiterate, could be pretty boring. We have three more, or sorry, four more months of this year. Just started September, October, November, December. It's four months. And then we have January, February, March, and then the end of April is currently when the next having is estimated to be. So that's eight entire months uh, leading up to the having, and we do see price in a very good position at the time of the having, and especially immediately after the having. And you can see this giant yellow line. Look what happened after each having immediately. Basically, hope your bags are packed by the having because it's absolute pumpy time. So basically, if you would sum this up the most simplistic way, you have about eight months left for potentially getting on the train of writing this Bitcoin having, which also lines up with it, probably at least one Bitcoin spot ETF approval, if not in the next four months, which these guys are saying from Bloomberg, there's a 75% chance of, again, I don't know how much I believe that, uh, but in the year 2024, basically they're saying 100% chance of an approval. 
then, I mean, even without a spot ETF, I believe Bitcoin will pump pretty big and altcoins as well. But I also think, you know, if we get that Bitcoin spot ETF, $200,000 per Bitcoin, easy. Without a Bitcoin spot ETF, I don't have a target um, necessarily even in six digits, right? I still think it'll go above all time highs in the next halving, but uh, for us to really push high above 100K, I think that the Bitcoin spot ETF is pretty necessary simply because how much capital is required to get Bitcoin above six digits. Uh, a Bitcoin spot ETF would make that so realistic and not having one, it's still realistic, but it's not guaranteed, which I think a Bitcoin spot ETF approval guarantees a six digit Bitcoin. Um, so with that being said, Bitcoin's daily chart, let's look at a few things. So we have the SPX down a little bit today. It's still above very good key moving averages though on the daily chart. And the DXY is having a little bit of a continued climb up. Could be a dead cat bounce here. Still not even above the highs that we set even Friday last week. So nothing super impressive there, but it's still going up a little bit. Specifically, Bitcoin is still not in a good position on the daily chart. The most recent pump we had because of the grayscale win against the SEC uh, a couple of days ago did put us back to these moving averages. But as I pointed out in my last video, we just got a bearish cross. The 21 going below the 200 day moving average right here, which we have not had since 2021. Okay. I pointed that out in my last video. We haven't had that since December of 2021. Now I'm not saying, I don't think we're going to drop another 70% like we did last time we got this cross, but I do think it's very likely we're still going to see a little downside over the next couple of weeks. It's very possible. Um, if anything changes on a daily uh, time frame because of some fundamental news or anything, that could change this. But overall, momentum for Bitcoin is still down. And it ends mostly sideways, though, let's be honest. It's mostly sideways. And as well, with that being said, Bitcoin's weekly chart is the only place we can actually find support. Daily chart, it's below all the key moving averages. On Bitcoin's weekly chart, however, we're below the 200 uh, week moving average, but the 50 week moving average sits right down here at about 24,000 US dollars. Last time I made a video, it was actually closer to 23,000, but we have seen it curve up, right? Uh, so that support is right down there, exactly kind of where this massive support was that we, or resistance was that we are flipping now, I believe, into support right here around 24 to 25,000 US dollars. I look at this as a massive level of support. And if we pull out the VPVR, the volume really starts to pick back up around the mid 24,000s. And gets, it just gets ginormous at 20K, obviously. But uh, right now, there's not a lot of volume where we're at. So price sliding down a little bit, I think is perfectly realistic and normal, not bad either. Um, so with that being said, yeah, weekly chart is basically the place to look for Bitcoin to find any support. Um, if we just look through in a couple more charts, again, we're, we're testing really key macro supports here. But as I said, 23,000, this is 23.5 right now uh, on this, this indicator, 23.5 is what it's showing. You see this massive level of hopefully, again, I think it's going to be very strong support. Um, you know, I want to see Bitcoin honestly come down here come down to 23,000, maybe a little below and see how it respects these price levels. Cause I think it will respect these price levels. Um, again, if we look on Bitcoin's daily chart, you see after we broke this, this uptrend, pretty much the middle of August, August 16th or so, um, this next level of support is where we're trying to hold. And we're so far like pretty decently above it. Like we haven't even fully tested it yet. So that's why I still also believe there's a plenty of uh, room for us to go down because we haven't really even tested this yet. We've still, we've stayed above it. And this daily chart for Bitcoin kind of further illustrates how weak Bitcoin's daily price action is. Um, uh, yeah, there's just not a ton of support um, in the very, very, very short term uh, until we see a lot of volume and like a big bounce in here. I mean, honestly, I think we need to go at least a little bit lower to like 24,000. Um, at least, as I said, I think we could go even a little bit below 23, but I don't think this dump is going to be over until we see at least 24,000 US dollars. And take advantage of massive sign up and deposit bonuses if you're interested in trading. Sign up with Femex below in my description. It takes 30 seconds and you can earn free XPT uh, for trading anything with both my links, Femex and BitGet. Uh, massive sign up deposit, uh, sign up and deposit bonuses as well. Uh, without any further ado, let's go.